the hot button topic of today. It's got something to do with Call of Duty. And not just Call of Duty, but the king himself. Scump and Hex from Optic have put a lawsuit in against Activision. This is insane. And we're going to talk about it real quick because some of the facts that Hex points out and Scump points out is ridiculous that Activision got away with this for as long as they did. So let's talk about it. I hate how this uh, title is Activision Blizzard accused by Call of Duty pros of illegal esports monopoly as of right now and mind you it's uh february 16th at about noon the only two people that have like really stepped forward about this is skump who is probably one of the best call of duty players to ever live and hex who's the owner operator whatever you want to call it of optic gaming i don't really consider hex a player because he hasn't really played competitively in pff, probably over 10 years um, but this is definitely like a nuclear bombshell and it's something that we're going to have to watch out for. And it, it, it's going to be one of those things that I'm really interested to see what comes out of this. Activision Blizzard opera, uh, operations of the Call of Duty League is now in subject of a lawsuit brought by two pro players who allege that the esports league is an illegal monopoly. One that prevents competition and forces players and teams to agree to extort uh, extraordinate financial terms and like it doesn't surprise me it really doesn't so let's keep on reading the two players known uh, known names in the professional call of duty circle optic gaming president hector hex rodriguez and pro player seth skump abner the second winningest player in the game's history are seeking $680 million in damages from Activision Blizzard. $680! That's almost a billion dollars. I'm waiting to I'm waiting to hear that. Like, have you or a loved one been affected by Activision Blizzard and their Call of Duty League? I'm waiting for that to like commercial to start happening because this is that's a ridiculous amount of money. But the lawsuit alleges Rodriguez, who ran Optic Gaming Call of Duty team for years, was effectively forced into a financially devastating partnership with billionaires, investors, in order to satisfy Activision de Activision's demands and gains uh, and gain one of the Call of Duty League's coveted 12-team spots. So they're talking about how it's terrible that he has to put himself in that kind of position, which he did end up losing the optic brand for a couple years. It's ridiculous. As noted by the lawsuit recently filed in federal court prior to the formation of Activision owned call of duty league in 2019 competitive call of duty tournaments were operated by multiple organizations, including GameStop and major league gaming, AKA MLG. And it's ridiculous to think about like MLG, is gone basically it's effectively gone there's no more mlg you might ask why well this next sentence tells you that changed when activisions itself acquired mlg and later formed the call of duty league effectively shutting down all professional call of duty esports leagues and tournaments other than the ones operated by activision itself okay but wait there's more uh, Activision has since, uh, has since the lawsuit allegations used the Call of Duty esports monopoly as a virtual nuclear weapon through the league. It is inspired by professional sports leagues like the NFL or the NBA. There is no collective bargaining agreement between the team owners and players, which I think that Activision, if there was a, you know, collective bargaining agreement between the players and the league, I think Activision would shut it down. And I'm only saying that because as we continue to read into this, bro, I did not realize the reach and the demands that Activision has on individuals that are in the league that, you know, Activision is like, pay me, pay me. It's very, very greedy. Unlike professional sports leagues where Activision owns the game itself and thus can restrict players from earning revenue from outside sources, Activision disapproves of. So basically, Activision could be like, 
you know what? We don't like that you're streaming on Twitch and earning money while playing Call of Duty, and they can shut it down. Think about that. They can shut down if you are a pro in the CDL, Call of Duty League. They can shut down and be like, I don't like that you're playing on stream. And there goes your source of income. Um, teams were required to pay $27.5 million entry fee to participate in the league. $27.5 million. Bro, I, I don't even know. Like, hearing numbers like that, it's like, I can't even remember how much it was for a League of Legends spot. I just know that it's like, it's pretty ridiculous. I, I think it was like 50 plus million for a League of Legends spots. In addition, Activision receives 50% of revenue from ticket sales, sponsorships, and other revenue streams. Bro, okay. So the breakdown of that is, okay, I can understand if they receive 50% of ticket sales. If they are throwing the event, they're booking the venue, they're doing all that legwork, okay, I can understand ticket sales. But if you have a sponsorship, and let's say you're Optic Gaming, you have a sponsorship, and they agree to pay you $2 million, a million of that has to go to Activision. That's stupid, especially if the sponsorship is for the team to throw it on their jersey to you know help support that team. Mm -mm. Bro. And then other revenue streams like that that to me is just it's just mind boggling to think that Activision has that kind of reach and demands for organizations like it would I would not blame organizations being like nope we're out if you know they're not making any kind of money it, that's dumb players are barred from commercializing Call of Duty gameplay on places like Twitch and YouTube as well and required to um to potentially lucrative brand deals uh, to Activision. Secede, potentially lucrative. So basically give all the brand deal money that they could potentially make to Activision. The lawsuit alleges players and teams were either forced to accept draconic anti-competitive terms that were favorable only for Activision and its monopoly or exit the market entirely. Bruh. <laughs> Activision knew that acquiring and maintaining monopoly power over its market would enable Activision to take extortionate uh, shares of the revenue, leading, uh, leaving the remaining table scraps and all the financial risk to the players and the teams who back uh, backs Activision would earn that revenue, the lawsuit states. Oh, absolutely. 100% of the... Like, how can I word this? 100% of the the risk was taken by the individuals that bought into this. And the players that potentially may not even get paid and they're looking to go somewhere else. But yet there's there, there's more into this. Earlier this year, Activision Blizzard's esports division was subject to massive layoffs during the future of the league into question. Activision Blizzard's Overwatch League, on which Call of Duty League was modeled, has ceased to exist. They did. They shut down the Overwatch League. And I believe there's an ongoing lawsuit with the owners from the Call of Duty, I mean, the Overwatch League, over being like, yo, where's our money? Because I want to say it was almost 20, 25 million for a, a team that you could get in the Overwatch League. And there was a lot of people that paid a lot of money to watch it succeed. And Activision just fumbled the bag. And I don't see how. Activision's going to struggle and lay off these individuals that are keeping the Call of Duty League up and running considering that Call of Duty, year in, year out, except for last year, has been the number one selling game. Think about that. Year in, year out. Call of Duty is the number one selling game every year. Every year. And you mean to tell me the division that kind of gives you the press and the 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 eyes on the game to push the pros is the ones that um you're you're, you're going to fire it doesn't make sense to me much of the esports division responsible for operating the league was laid off earlier this year the fact um has added insult to significant injury according to a lawsuit stating that the company has run the activision activision call of duty league into the ground like i said 
you're getting rid of the people that are getting the eyes on the product, whether it be the pro play, whether it be on the video game that could potentially drive sales or potentially drive sales of skins in the game, which I don't even know what the revenue split for that is, uh, you know, into the ground. It 100% is dragging it into the ground. In a statement to Bloomberg, an Activision Blizzard spokesman has said that it has no bias I mean, basis on facts or laws, and that it will strongly defend its claims against, I mean, defend against the claims. We are disappointed that these members of the esports community would bring the suit, which is disruptive to team owners, players, fans, and partners who have invested so much time and energy into the Call of Duty League success, the spokesperson said. Activision Blizzard settled a civil antitrust lawsuit with the U.S. Department of Justice last year over the concerns that the Overwatch and Call of Duty League violated antitrust laws by capping player salaries in the form of competitive balance tax, something Activision removed from the leagues in 2021. All right, I want you to think about that. They want, they cap player salaries and have a competitive balance tax. But said players are not allowed to go outside of the Call of Duty League, basically, and seek sponsorship, brand deals, capitalize on a game that they play professionally, and create more revenue for them so that they can live comfortably, especially in the offseason. Like what? The offseason for Call of Duty is like four months, I think, maybe five and are, are they getting paid during that time? I highly doubt it. But it, to me, just doesn't make sense that they're doing this. <laughs> All right, you guys. So that's my two cents on this lawsuit. Like I said, it's not really two players. It's an owner-operator and then the king himself, Scum, taking you know at matters into their own hands to... Try to make the Call of Duty League better. Create more ways for people to get more eyes on pro play. Create potentially a bubble scene. And to like really like push the game forward instead of being stuck where it's at right now. Um, I, do, I do agree to a certain extent that sometimes players or employees, depending on what kind of you know topic you're discussing should watch what they say about what they're doing. Like, you can't really bash, you know, your employer. You can't bite the hand that feeds. But this kind of stuff right here is not cool. I did not realize Activision had that much of a chokehold on competitive Call of Duty. That's my two cents. Y'all comment down below. Let me know what you think about this lawsuit. You think it's frivolous? Or do you think that they're, they might actually have some, you know, they might be on to something. Y'all take it easy. Don't forget to mash that like button, comment, and subscribe. Every little bit helps. I want to thank each and every single one of you guys. You guys are awesome. We're on our way to 8,000 subscribers. 8,000. It's mind-blowing. We've been on one hell of a year and a half tear, and I can't do it without you guys. Until next time, you guys, I'll catch you later.